God bless you, brothers and sisters, and welcome to a brand new class of Ephesians, chapter 5. Uh, and we're going to begin with, uh, yes, yes, we're, we just changed it. it we're, we're, actually, we're actually recording in real time. So, yes, yes, uh, don't, worry about, don't worry about anything. Yes, we're in chapter 5, Life in the Spirit. And I hope that last week... Last week you could have taken you 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 had a blessed time just like we did here, uh, just recording these classes, and it's very important for us to keep on learning uh, what what the apostle Paul was telling the 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 Ephesians. So today we're gonna we're gonna start. We're still on section C, the spirit filled life, submission, and responsibility in marriage. Last week we were looking about we were looking at the aspect of wives, the, how the wives need to submit to their husbands. Today we're going to enter, and we're going to tackle on the perspective of the husband, right? So today we're going to tackle on the perspective of the husband. If you thought, men, that you were off the hook, no, no, you're going to get it today. So, <laughs> so we're going to begin with verses 23 and 24. So. The Word of God says, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, it says, For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is head of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. Verse 24 says, Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Right? So, verses 23, 23 and 24 Reasons for a Christian wife's submission. Now, let's take that word for. The command given in Ephesians 5.22 is difficult. God knows this. So, He also includes reasons, right, for His command. He wants us to understand the principle behind this command, right? So, I have it there uh, uh, bigger. Right there, right? So he wants us to understand what, what's, what's important. So the mo this means that the motive of her submission must, must be obedience and respect to Jesus instead of obedience and respect to her husband. Right? So primarily the motive, the most important motive here is her submission needs to have these two factors obedience and respect to Jesus Christ right now it says for the husband is the head of the wife Paul states here the second reason of a wife a wife's submission it is because the husband is the head of the wife just as we we, we always hear this this phrase the husband is the head of the household, right? So here is, he is the head of the wife. This means, it means to have the appropriate responsibility to lead and the, ma and, and the matching accountability. It is right and appropriate to submit to someone who is our head. So, in broader terms, in general terms, we submit to the boss. We submit to those in charge. We submit to those who are leading, right? So, I'm a big I'm a big sports fan. You know, I'm a big sports fan. And one of my, uh, if I can play, place it in, 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 let's use basketball for, for a minute. So, my favorite team is the Golden State Warriors right ever ever since they they won the championship and, and everything but if you watch them play you always see somebody who is very vocal now maybe you don't you don't watch basketball but I'm gonna use different <laughs> I'm gonna use different sports so you can you know <laughs> so, so you can so you can uh, identify yourself right so you have Stephen Curry but you have Draymond Green now Stephen Curry is the best player in that team but Draymond Green is the 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 soul the heart and soul of that team he's the one who's always vocal 
He leads by example. He leads by telling telling everybody, hey, we need to get, we need to start working out and working together. We need to stop the offense. We need to be always on defense. We need to keep our guard. He's the one who's always vocal and he's leading by that command, right? So let's put it into football. Who leads the offense who leads the offense? Who leads the attack? Who comes in with the brain and says, we're going to do this, we're going to do this? It's the quarterback, right? The quarterback, after they're done with the huddle, he decides who is he? Is he going to throw it, run it, whatever? But he is the quarterback. Basically, he's the one who is leading the charge, right? On defense, it's the linebackers. Or maybe it's a lineman who is the captain who is telling him, hey, if we don't block, if we don't stop their attack, then nothing that we're gonna get, we're gonna get blown out. Right? In soccer, there's captains. There's a captain inside the field. There's the coach outside of the field, but there's a coach inside of a field. In baseball, there's a captain. There's always who is, is vocal, who is the head, who everybody listens to. That's what we're talking about. The husband plays that role. The husband plays the role of the leader, of the head. Basically, he's putting himself, he's more, basically he's more, he's more prone to criticism because he's the head, right? Leaders, captains are more prone to criticism. Why? Because, hey, the team, why is the team messed up? Did you, did you speak? Did you tell them? But the head also takes care, also protects, right? So that's that's uh, something very important that we should learn about, right? When you look at the biblical idea of headship, it's it's in the passages as First Corinthians eleven and First Timothy chapter three. The emphasis is uh, is to uh, const uh, put uh, put constant. Constantly upon the fact that the man was created first and not the woman. So there is a priority by creation for man. Of course, we all know this. Man was created first, but God said it's not right. It's not good for man to be alone. So that's why he created women second. But there's a priority of creation going on here. I'm not saying that, uh, you know, men are better than women. No. We're just stating the fact here. It's a priority of creation. Man came first, right? So the scriptures also emphasize that the fact that the woman was made out of man, taken out of the man to show a connection with him. And that she was meant to be a help for man, a help for man that was fitting for him. Men and women should be, a marriage is not to compete against one another, to see who is the best one. No, you need to help one another. Women were created to help men because women are more versatile. They can act on the fly. They, we need to say it is women can multitask. Men, we cannot. We, we operate in boxes. <laughs> to, 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 to put it in, in, in better terms, we operate one step at a time. But women do a lot. And that's why they're the greatest help for man, right? It's fitting. Now, Lloyd-Jones says, Notice that the apostles lay great stress upon it. Man was created first. But not only that, man was also made the Lord of creation. It was to man that this authority was given over the brute animal creation. It was man who was called upon to give them names. Here are indications that man was put into a position of leadership, lordship, and authority, author, uh, authority and power. He takes the decisions. 
He gives the rulings. That is the fundamental teaching with regard in this whole manner. That's what it means. And we should all know this. Right? The Lord God gave Adam lordship. As you can see, he named the animals. He named them all. Right? So he, he gave man the authority. Right? So, passages such as 1 Corinthians 17, 7 through 10 make the point that God created Adam first and gave him responsibility over Eve. This happened before the fall. He gave, them, he gave Adam responsibility over Eve. Why? Because she was a part of him. So, husbands, you need to take care of your wives because they're your responsibility. Do your treasures. Treat them as such. Right? So, you can't, you, can't, you can't take advantage of that. You need to... They're your priority. They're your responsibility to take care of them. Therefore, this passage makes it clear that before and after the fall, God ordained there, there be different rules between husbands and wives. Right? So there's different roles between them. Different. And we're going to see, we're going to see them. Why? The difference in the roles between husband and wife are not the result of the fall and are not erased by our new life in Jesus Christ. Now, again, we go back to Lord Jones and he says, what he is saying is that the woman is different. That she is the complement of the man. What he does pro what he does what he does prohibit is that woman should seek to be manly that is that a woman should seek to behave as a man or that a woman or that a woman should seek to uh, usurp the place the position and the power which has been given to man by God himself that is all that he is saying it's pretty pretty self-explanatory it is not slavery. He is encouraging. Exhorting means to encourage, not to rebuke or not to punish or not to, you know, uh, raise your voice at someone. No, it, it doesn't mean that. It, it means basically to encourage his readers to realize that God has ordained this. It was an order, a mandate from God. Right? So, women shouldn't try to usurp the, the, the role of man or trying to be more manly because that, that, that's not the purpose of their creation. Now, if, if we put it in, in, in terms of today, yes, we do have single mothers who have to take that role, who have to be, man, who have to be father and mother at the same time. We see that. And that they have to adapt themselves to be the head of their household. And yes, it's, it's pretty note. It, we see this all the time. We see fathers trying to be a father and a mother at the same time, knowing, right? We, we see this. We see this happening. But women weren't created to take the place of the man or to usurp the authority of the man, right? As, as it is pretty self-explanatory here, right? He continues on saying, when a woman gets married, she gives up her name. She takes the name of her husband. This is biblical and also the custom of the whole world. That teaches us the relationship between the husband and the wife. It is not only the husband who changes his name, but the wife. We always think that, oh no, uh, the wife will change her name. No, it's also the husband. The husband also changes his name. Because now he belongs to, now he's, 
Now he's the wife, the, the, the husband of such and such, right? So his name also changes. So that's, that's what it means. You know, this, it, it's biblical. It, wives take the name of their husbands. So it says also, Christ is the head of the church. We're, we're in verse 23. Therefore, uh, verse 24, my bad. So, just as the church is sub, sub, uh, subjective to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands. Paul presents here a third reason for a Christian wife's submission to her husband. She should submit because the relationship of her husband and wife is the model of the union between Jesus and the church. We've been hinting this and saying this constantly, right? The, this point is simple and clear. We have a model for the marriage relationship, the relationship between Jesus and the church. That's how, the mari how your marriage should look like. For all, my, uh, for all my brothers and sisters who are married, that is exactly how your marriage, what your marriage should be and how it should reflect. The relationship between you and Jesus. Jesus in the church. That is exactly how it should be. It's very simple. And that's it. It's straight to the point. Your relationship should mirror. Your marriage should mirror exactly the relationship that Jesus has towards the church. And vice versa. Right? In that relationship, the headship of Jesus Christ is unquestioned. So also is the husband the head of the team that is one flesh, one flesh relationship of husband and wife. How amazing is that? We always hear about this, but this is amazing, right? Knowing that Christ is always in front, but he's not in just in front of the church. No, he's in front of your marriage too. You guys are a team. You know, we always say in relationships that it's just two. No, in a Christian relationship is three. You, whether it, whether it is your, your, your spouse, you and your spouse, and in the connection is God. So three, right? So it's you, your spouse, and God. That's the, that's the perfect relationship in your marriage, right? It's not about two people only. No, it's three. God, you, and your spouse. It's not just you and your spouse. It's God, you, and your spouse. And why am I putting God first? Because He is leading your marriage. He is helping you. He is trying to, to show you this is the way you need to take care of your wife. Wife, this is the way you need to submit to your husband. You need to love one another. Submit to one another. Give your lives for one another just as I have given my life for my church. So how's your relationship? Your relationship with God needs to mirror that. And that's the most important thing that, that we can hold from this. If you're not married, then you have a relationship with God. And that's still a marriage. You're a team with God. You form a team. And whether God decides to send you someone who would help you, who would show you, who will be there for you, it will be God, you, and that other person. So I'll, I want to end with this. You who are, are, are married, you work as a team with God. If you're not married, you're still working as a team with God. So, this shows us that Christ is always in front and He's in control. And He's the head 
of the church and the head of your family and the head of your household and the head of your life without question. So with this, I want to end tonight. I hope you learned just as I learned. And I, I am very happy just to say the, these words and to, to explain all of this. Please join us next week as we continue on with what the Apostle Paul was saying to the Ephesians. Please, please continue to look and to see what we have in store for our following events. Please follow, follow our YouTube channel and like our Facebook page because we have a lot of things that we need to share with you along, the, uh, along this week. So with that being said, God bless you and I'll see you here next week.